something that is did just happen. It is caused by negligence. Negligence in common cleanliness and personal hygiene. Given but a fraction of a chance, food poisoning will strike in the home. It will strike in the shop. Food poisoning starts here because laziness, bad habits and carelessness lead to the dirty and unsatisfactory preparation of food. This would be bad enough if we were putting only ourselves or our families at risk. But in this company, we prepare food for thousands of people every day. Just as doctors and nurses care for their patients, each and every one of us has a legal and moral responsibility for the cleanliness and the quality of the food we prepare. Hygiene is not something that we start doing or put on when we come to work and then stop doing and take off again before we go home. Hygiene is the foundation of health. It means being clean all the time. Hygiene is clean common sense. To those who have suffered all the gripings and vomitings of food poisoning, cleanliness and hygiene have a real meaning. Nobody asks for food poisoning twice. To those who have not, the whole business may seem to be a deal of fuss and bother just to satisfy some regulation or other. We offer you two ways of finding out. The first is to take a cream cake, touch it with a soiled first aid dressing, and then lead it for about eight hours. Now, eat it. The second way is quite painless. Just listen to what we have to say. What is food poisoning? Food poisoning is the illness brought about by the taking of food or drink in which there are harmful substances or organisms. In a normal healthy body, this is what happens. The harmful agents irritate the stomach walls, which contract violently, causing the contents to be vomited up. If any of the contaminated food does pass through to the intestines, accumulated, and the contents of the bowel are discharged with some frequency. As a rule, these bodily defenses of vomiting and diarrhea lead to recovery, painful and uncomfortable though they may be. But there are situations, especially with children, the elderly, and those already sick, where the body is unable to cope with the poisons. In some cases, death. Just what can pollute our food? They fall into three main groups. Chemical, for example, metallic poisoning caused by storing acid foods in copper or galvanized containers. Fungal, that is, contamination by mold, as seen sometimes growing on stale bread. And by far the most troublesome, bacterial. It is this group that concerns us most. Bacteria are minute living organisms which can be seen only under a powerful microscope. They're so small that 20 million of them could exist on this pinhead. Bacteria are not necessarily harmful to man. For instance, it is the action of the bacteria in the soil that makes it fertile, so ensuring our food crop. Then, certain bacteria are deliberately used in the manufacture of foods like cheese and yogurt. These we enjoy, and they do us no harm. But, on the other hand, some bacteria are most harmful, and besides being in themselves contaminants, produce waste matters called toxins. These toxins are intensely poisonous. It is, then, the harmful bacteria, or germs, that we have to seek out and destroy. Well, in order to fight germs, we must know something about them. What are their needs? In what ways are they dangerous? How do they grow? 
Where do they come from? To multiply, germs need warmth, moisture and food. Without these conditions, germs become inactive. Germs are dangerous because they can spread from one place to another without being detected. Unlike fungal contamination, which is usually spotted and avoided, bacterial contamination cannot be seen, and in most cases it can neither be smelt nor tasted. Poisoned food does not have to be off or high. They are also dangerous because given these conditions, germs multiply at an alarming rate. The germ multiplies by splitting itself into two every 20 minutes or so. This means that one germ could, in only 10 hours, become more than 1,000 million germs, all spewing out toxins. Why are germs dangerous? And why do they make us ill? Germs are parasitic organisms that feed not only on some of the foods we eat, but on living blood and tissue. Imagine the body as a thick tube. Viewed end on, this is the protective outer skin, and this is the wall of the food channel. When germs penetrate the skin, infection occurs. That is what is going on here in this septic cup. And so it is with the inner wall. If contaminated food is eaten, unexpelled germs are absorbed by digestion and they set up an internal infection. The one germ that is allowed to contaminate a warm meat stew left standing in the kitchen can turn it virtually into a saucepan of dynamite. But the fundamental question for us is, of course, where do germs come from and how do they get into our food? Germs are everywhere. They're in the air, they're in the soil, and they're in the water. They're part of our environment. We can therefore expect to find some germs already in most of our raw food. Then food can be contaminated further by contact with rats, flies, cockroaches, mice, and other pests that by nature wallow in dirt. but by far the greatest contamination is caused by man himself in the things he does and in the things he does not do. Because of the environment, human beings have always had germs living on the outsides and insides of their bodies. Given the chance, most of these germs are capable of poisoning food. The reason why they do not normally make us ill is because the body's defenses are able to contain them. There are parts of the body, though, where germs concentrate to a level where they can be easily and dangerously passed on. These are in the hair, in the nose, mouth and ears, in the bowel, and here in the groin. An even higher concentration exists in pimples, boils, and cuts, where infection has developed in and under the skin. At the same time, germs will not only live in the environment, they will breed. Some of the common breeding grounds are all unclean surfaces, soiled towels, and in cracks and crevices. Danger spots in the lavatory are the seat, the flush handle, and the doorknob, all of which come into direct contact with germs. In food handling areas, danger lurks in unclean overalls, cleaning and wiping cloths of all descriptions, unsuitable first aid dressings, this one is not waterproof, but more of that later, handkerchiefs, sinks and drains, and all surfaces whatsoever where contact is made with food. 
The main answer then as to how germs get into our food is that man puts them there. He does this in three ways. By direct contact, indirectly by droplet infection from coughing, sneezing and spitting, <coughs> and by allowing food to come in contact with unclean surroundings. Right. We now know how food poisoning happens. What must we do to prevent it? We must stop the movement and multiplication of germs, and therefore the pollution they cause. Well, one of the ways of helping to do this is by cooking. Most germs are destroyed by boiling or by oven heat. Another way is by refrigeration. Cold will not destroy germs, but it will make them inactive and prevent them from multiplying. So with foods like meat, soups, stews, egg dishes and so on, we either eat them immediately after cooking, or if they're to be kept, cool them quickly and store them in a the refrigerator. At the same time, it may not be practical to use refrigeration. Then, not all foods are cooked. In any case, no amount of cooking will destroy the poisonous toxins once they have formed. Clearly then, we must keep germs away from food. We have to shut the door on germs and lock it. And the key to that lock is the key to cleanliness. There are three parts to this key, so let's take a look at them one by one. Keep clean. To keep clean personally is the basic rule from which all the other rules of hygiene follow. Remember, Bacteria live on all of our skins, whether they be black, white, brown, or yellow. And for us in the food business, the bath every day is certainly not overdoing things. In many places, the company provides hot showers both for men and women. Use them. They're free. In food manufacture and food preparation, hands cannot be washed too frequently. This is because germs resting in the pores of the skin are constantly being brought to the surface by perspiration. In this sequence of speeded up film, you can see just how much fingers perspire in only 10 minutes. Hands must always be washed immediately before entering a production department or food handling area. After blowing or wiping the nose, they must be washed. And after a visit to the lavatory, they must be scrubbed. Germs penetrate toilet paper. Hands touching that paper become contaminated. Contaminated hands poison food. There is no excuse for anybody, anywhere, and at any time, not to wash their hands after visiting the lavatory. Furthermore, as a food handler, should you get a bowel disorder or any sort of tummy trouble, you must report the matter to your medical department immediately. The hands of a food handler need to be more than just clean. They need to be immaculate. Nails must be kept short and manicured, for it is under the nails and cuticles that germs linger. As for nail biting, which carelessly carries germs from the mouth to whatever is touched next, food handlers simply must not do it. Jeweled rings can harbor germs behind the stones and in the crevices. Besides, losing a diamond inside a Swiss roll is both dangerous and a tragedy. <laughs> Rings like this must be removed before starting work and keep them safe. Other things that have to be kept safe are cuts, boils and wicklows which present special contamination risks. Should you get one of these, you are legally bound under the food hygiene regulations to get it dressed correctly before starting work. Report to your medical department where you will receive the right treatment and a safe, waterproof dressing.
hair needs frequent washing. Although daily hair washing for the ladies may not be practical, it must be remembered that germs do live in the hair and that it must be covered. The headgear you're supplied with is not a piece of nonsense to set off your hair. It is a barrier. Use it in conjunction with a hairnet to make sure that your hair is fully covered. Stray hairs contaminate food. The second part to the key is eyes open. And it's not quite so silly as it sounds. Our eyes are open all day long, for most of us anyway. But what do they see? Usually only the things we want to see. He needs to keep his eyes open for a whim. We need to keep ours open for cleanliness. Not only for personal cleanliness, but for the cleanliness of our surroundings. If it is your job to look after areas like this, pay special attention to these danger points. And let us all see that we leave the lavatory as we wish to find it. See the sense in washing up correctly. The ideal way is to use rubber gloves and sudsy water that is really too hot for bare hands. After washing, crockery should be rinsed in hot, clean water and left to drain dry in racks. To polish glasses, use a fresh, dry paper towel. If you must use a glass cloth, remember that it's not a hand towel. For drying the hands, use either these pull-down towels or disposable paper ones. Damp cloths harbour germs. Eyes open too for all those other places where germs breed. Cracked crockery. Throw it out. Crevices. Get them eliminated. Sinks and drains. Keep them clean and disinfected. Walls and floors. See that they're washed frequently. And most important, keep a very close eye on the cleanliness of all those surfaces that come into contact with food, both in the kitchen and manufacturing department. Keep clean and eyes open add up to your responsibility. There is no excuse whatsoever for uncleanliness in food handling. That is why the food hygiene regulations are law. We can't spy on you like this to see if you scrub your hands after visiting the lavatory. Neither is anyone going to ask you if you've had a bath, washed your hair, or changed into clean clothing. And nobody is going to stand over you just to make sure that the surroundings are clean. You know what must be done, and it is your responsibility to do it. Well, after all this, does anyone fancy a nice cup of tea? A ham sandwich, perhaps. Or how about one of these nice cream cakes? No? Are you quite sure? Isn't the painless way of learning so much more sensible?